I know there's so many videos out there about top t- top three things to do if you want to succeed and five things you need to work on and blah, 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 blah. I see them all the time. I didn't even want to make this particular video and word it like that, but it's something that I have been doing for several years now while I've been doing jujitsu and I always take the, those principles and apply it into life. So I wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully you guys like it. But um, yeah, jujitsu is one of those things where like I said, I've been doing it now for seven years and it's a grueling hard sport. You know, if you just look at it on the surface level, you know, it just looks like, you know, two people engaging in some sort of martial arts, some sort of combat. If you see the UFC, you can see a lot of the similarities. You can see jujitsu intertwined in their arts. But on a deeper level, it is just so many things mentally and spiritually that the, the majority of us, we get from it. And that's a part of it that people don't really know because it's not really talked about so much. You know, if you Google YouTube or YouTube, you know, Google YouTube, if you YouTube any jujitsu, the first wave of videos are going to be more techniques and things like that. Eventually, you start getting to more of the philosophy in jujitsu. And that's something for me that is what, what's kept me coming back. I mean, like I said, seven years. I started as a white belt and I made it all the way to brown belt currently because it's what I'm getting on an emotional level, on a spiritual level that has helped me you know, immensely. You know, even the interactions that I've been having, meeting new people, it's helped me immensely in, in life. So, you know, I, lo- I know people complain about, oh, you always talking about jujitsu, jujitsu. Well, it's done a lot for me. It's done a hell of a lot for me. Like I, I, I owe it to jujitsu. I was talking to my, my professor the other day. It's like, I owe jujitsu because once this pandemic hit and, and I lost my mother and I'm just alone in this room, just wondering what has happened, I had to go train because I had oh, just this overwhelming pain and intensity and anger. You know, just always thinking about, I can't believe I lost my mother through this and the way I lost her, you know, I watched her go. You know, so all of that pent up just anger and rage and then things are shut down. You can't go anywhere. You know, I can't get a lift in. And if you're not careful, it becomes volatile and it can explode. And I felt I was getting there, to be honest with you. And that and it's it, it happens often. You know, it's not something like it's a one and done. This happens to me often. You know, I think about her and I think about the situation and sometimes I get angry and sometimes just get upset. But what do I do? I have to channel that. And that's that's the other side that I've been working on with myself is just channeling and channeling, channeling it and then put it into something positive. Channeling and channeling. I feel it building up. I I feel it happening, channeling it and then and put into something positive. And jujitsu has been such an important part of that. You know, I was very grateful that the academy was able to open up and I can just get back in there and just express myself and just unleash, you know, and it's been helping tremendously. And I'm so glad that that it is open. But within that, a lot of these principles that I've been getting from jujitsu, especially now, it's been making a difference in my life. You know, one of them is just being present. I think that's one of the biggest things right now that we all need to do is just be present in the moment. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen next week. We don't know what's gonna happen next month. We don't know, you know, if that stimulus check that you've been hoping for, is it coming? We don't know any of these things. Is your job coming? You know, I we don't know. I was resting, constantly resting on the fact that, okay, they're gonna call back. They're gonna call back. The job is gonna call back. And you know what, they didn't. You know, I, I'm just planning forward like, okay, they'll be calling back. We'll be good in a second. Well, until they do, I have to be working in the now. I have to be focusing on what can I do right now, this very second, this very time, what can I do? And when next day, if I'm blessed to see the next day, be right back in, into, pre, in, into the present mode and focus on what can I do now? How can I benefit this day and maximize this, this day to do as best as I can? That's what being in the moment is. And then from then, those constant days that you've been putting in maximum work, they start to build up. You're stacking your W's until that opportunity 
is ready. That it might not have been the opportunity you initially wanted, but you've been putting in the work, you've been stacking, doing what you need to do. Maybe you have been working on the business, your own business. You know, you've been fine tuning other things. You've been fine tuning your finances to where, okay, hey, let's let, let's plan for a rainy day. Let's cut the corners a little bit, whatever it may be. But the thing is, you took action within that day. You just didn't say, huh, we could do it tomorrow. No, you treat it every day as if the tomorrow is gonna happen. You have to treat it like that. You have to treat every day like it's no tomorrow to just maximize the whole day and be as efficient as possible in getting things done. Don't use the excuse tomorrow is gonna be here. You don't know. I experienced that. I thought tomorrow was gonna be here for her and it wasn't. Just like that. So no, be present. Be present in the moment. Maximize the moment in everything that you're doing. And even if it's a small task, maximize it. Hug your wife a little harder. Hug your husband a little harder. Hug your kids a little harder. Go a little bit harder in the gym. Put, put in the work in the gym. So I was working with you know, a few people that I work with on, on coaching and we have these discussions and they show me what they've done versus how they felt. And it's like, oh, well, it's not the workout. You know, they may have a little issue with, oh, I didn't really feel the pump today or whatever. I'm just feeling that. And I'm like, well, okay, where were you? And they would usually respond with, oh, I was in the gym. And I was like, no, where were you? Where were you mentally? Because you, you weren't there. And I can relate to this. There's some days I would get into the academy years ago and I would just be there, just on cruise control. And that's the wrong way to do it. I was not tapped in, I was not honed in. And a lot of us do that. We gotta stop that. We're just on autopilot, just going, just kind of living it medio, you know, mediocrity. We just go through the motions, we know how it works. You know, we get this amount done, just enough to make it work, to make the boss happy, just to make just enough to make the wife, wife ha happy, and that's that. Why don't we push ourselves? Let's push a little bit more. Let's be dialed in a little bit more. But now when I come to the academy, the phone is long gone, the phone is away. The only time I reach the phone is if I'm gonna shoot these videos. The phone is on vibrate. When you're back with your family, yeah, okay, if it's a Netflix night, let's make it the best Netflix night for tonight. It is what it is. Let's go above and beyond. Let's go hard every day in, every, in all aspects of our life. Let's go hard with our workouts. Let's go hard with loving our family. Let's go harder with building with our family. Let's go harder with building with yourself. Let's set the bar just a little bit higher instead of just riding this coasting wave. Let's take it up a notch. I was talking to somebody in the gym after we got done rolling and he asked me the question, how many days do I work out? And I'm like, every day, which I don't like answering that question because most of the time people don't believe me. I was like, um, I'm in the academy every day. And then he asked me again, no, you're not. How many days are you in there? Every day. He's like, you're crazy. I, I couldn't do it. What do you, nuts, what do you, well, that's, that's my normal. That's my crazy then. That's my going hard because I understand the process. That's me going hard every day because I'm making the commitment to be better. What are you guys making the commitment to be better at? Yourself, your physique, your body? You wanna change your body? What is it that you wanna do? Go hard, be in the moment. Another one that I think it, it just, all of these just tie into it. Expose yourself. Expose the weakness in your life. I've been reading some awesome comments and I've been getting some messages lately from other, from some of you guys and I appreciate it. And they've just been said, yeah, I've been kind of coasting a little bit. Now it's when, okay, first off that we're acknowledging it, we're exposing the gaps. In jujitsu, when we're rolling, you can be the top dog in there, 
submit everybody, but that doesn't mean you're getting better. You can be the head of the, of the mat in that academy. Sub- submitting everybody, everyone gets beat by you. Everyone's nervous to roll with you, but you don't get better. How, what does that mean? Because you're not allowing yourself to expose what you need to work on. There, we all have weaknesses. We all have weaknesses that we can work on and we all have weaknesses that we can explore. The hardest part is expo- exposing them. Saying to yourself, okay, I'm lacking here. Saying to yourself, no, nah, this doesn't look good. Being aware of that, being in, in the moment with it. And once you expose that, what are you gonna do with it? Because that's hard. That's so hard to do. But it's so important to do. To expose a gap in your weakness and say, now I'm gonna focus nothing but that. And you work on it, you work on it. We're not just in here focusing on our strengths. Okay, we know what we're good at. We know the strengths that we have. We keep refining our strengths, but we're trying to be the total package. We want everything to, I pull everybody up. I want everybody up. If I'm rolling with people at, at the academy, and their lower belts, I'm a brown belt, if their lower belts, blue belt, white belt, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna benefit from that role because after that role is done and he's a new person, doesn't know any technique right now, hey, I'm gonna help build you up. If you want that, if you wanna be built up, that's another thing. Why? Because you're an asset. I want everyone around me to be just awesome assets. So I want everyone to be built up. So I expose their, their, some of their weaknesses and they may not like it. it may, may, the way it comes across, it may sound a little harsh, but it's not. It's just the fact that I love you guys. So I want to see you guys win. So, hey, let's work on this. This is why you keep getting smashed, whatever. Same thing with me. I have to look deep in, in myself. And this is over the last couple of months, it forced me to look deep in myself. Over the last couple of months, it forced me to look into myself and say, okay, there's some things in there that we need to work on. Because I went to a very, very dark place that I did not expect to go to. I went to a super dark place when my mother died. A very dark place, which I thought, I don't know if I'm gonna come back. And I kept falling back into these dark places. I was like, ooh, okay, this this isn't good. This is a place where I keep ending up at, you know, this is, this is a weak spot of mine. I have to work on this. How? I don't know, but I need help here. I need help here. And that was the hardest thing to really, really to put a mirror in front of my face and say, okay, you need to deal with this because you're going to kill yourself. And it was true guys. It was so true. It was so true. I went down this dark path. So I had to really, really just close off from everything and do some serious talking to myself. And I know some people say, hey, you can always reach out to someone, go talk to someone. And yes, I know that's out there. And I'm sorry guys for for this long video today. But I resonate sometimes with people who have gone through it. Uh, That's just kind of my, my honest answer and how I how I can connect with people. Uh, I connect based, based, based off of their stories, uh, some of their experiences. And yes, people have, some people have reached out to me, but me trying to explain how I'm feeling, you would never understand because you've never gone through something this traumatic. And me trying to put it into words wouldn't even do it justice. My vocabulary isn't even big enough to put it into words with how I feel and how how it's overwhelming and how it's a battle. Every day it is a battle. And that's why I love you guys uh, for giving me the opportunity to make these videos, to be able to have all, all of these thoughts and now I can put it on a piece of paper, I can put it in my phone and then express it to you guys. And hopefully it'll be able to resonate with somebody out there and that's a good job. You know, so with exposing those gaps, now you see where, where we can make an improvement and where we can work on it. You know, we don't, we don't want to just continue making improvements on the stuff we're already good at. That's fine. But no, the weakest link, 
we need to work on. And that's another thing that jujitsu will force you. It will force you every day. It will expose you to your gaps. If you haven't been training or if you haven't been proficient in learning the techniques that we've been learning throughout the couple months of class or however long you've been there in class, and then you have someone else who has been paying attention to class or he's just flat out better than you. He could be a higher belt than you and you guys start to roll and he just starts to expose, okay, gaps in your game. You can either get very upset, which a lot of people do, get super furious, or understand, okay, I had a better role than you because you just beat me up. But for me, I was able to see what I need to work on. I was able to get the lesson. I can see what I need to work on. Let me go back to the drawing board, refine things, and then come back into it. That's life also. When we get let down, we get shot down, and we're at the bottom of the bottom. What are we gonna do? Now it's like, okay, time to be resourceful. Let me bring out some of my skill sets. This is when I do bring out my strengths and say, okay, we're a little weak here. How can, how can my strengths bring up my weaknesses? And it showed that in a lot of people, people became resourceful. People had to figure it out because the whole world got exposed and we couldn't stop. We, we can't stop, guys. We cannot stop. We cannot stop. I don't want you guys to stop. Please don't stop. I'm not going to stop no, because I'm inspired and motivated with doing these videos for you guys. I'm inspired by and motivated by some people out here who know what's going on. I'm inspired. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep fighting. Let's get it.